everyone. It's Natalie with Thistles and Coos. This is Connie, our wonderful interpreter at the moment. Um, we wanted to talk today about Jack the Ripper tour in London. We all know the story, unsolved murder case that happened back in the late 1800s. Um, and what's amazing is it's a, you can get a free tour in London. It's easy. We'll post the uh, sign up the website how you can sign up for it you meet with a local storyteller now it is a free tour but the thing that you have to remember is they expect tips at the end so carry small amounts of cash and be ready to tip your guide because honestly it's an amazing experience your tour guide with this free tour that we have we had four people in our group while we were on the tour we saw other groups that had like 20 and 30 and it was huge hordes. So it was more intimate and personal in the group. But what we loved about this tour, it takes about two hours. You get to hear the stories. Really get to see where, um, who each person was that was actually murdered, um, where they were, had met their demise basically and you get to experience it. So what we, that was the, the whole premise of going on the tour. But what we wanna set the video up today is like what we experienced on the tour. Now, um, I am one that I like ghost stories. I like haunted things and like be, you know, scared at night and everything. And this was honestly perfect. Um, I wasn't expecting an actual, um, something to kind of happen, but it did. So we want to tell our story about what it was. So do you want to <laughs> start with the story or just like keep going or? Okay, I'll start. Okay. So um, for again, four of us on this tour and the tour guide takes you around and then you stop in specific places. Uh, so I'll, I'll kind of talk about, I wish I could remember the exact story he was telling, um, but he was talking about how Jack the Ripper uh, murdered this one uh, female prostitute. And so he brings us to like this alley and he sits more kind of outside of uh, some of the old buildings. And uh, he sits there and we're standing there and he, he starts telling the story and then this mouse like comes out of the building. It was really weird and just kind of kind of comes up almost right behind the tour guide and then kind of just scuttles off and he doesn't the tour guide doesn't even react. He just keeps going on with the story where we're like, do y'all see that mouse? Did anybody else see the mouse? Okay, we're gonna go. So he's he's talking and prior to the tour, we didn't get a chance to eat. Well because I carry snacks <laughs> in my bag at all times. So funny part of the story is he's talking about how Jack the Ripper like slices the woman open and he's taking her, you know, insides out and guts. And I realized I was had a granola bar and I'm just so intense on this story. And I'm just like <laughs> crunching, making <laughs> a lot of noise. And I thought, how oh, so inappropriate of me as he's talking about, you know, this poor woman is being mutilated and I'm like, oh, huh, I think I have chocolate chips in there. Uh, <laughs> Natalie kind of looks at me like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'll, I'll put it back in my bag. I'm so sorry. Uh, so, so anyway, so we keep going and he's taking us to all these different um, places. And at one point he's walking us down this road and it's literally empty. There's nobody. So my like gut starts to kind of go, um, nobody knows where you are. Your cell phones don't work. You don't know this tour guide. And I'm like, I said to Natalie, I'm like, they're gonna murder us. We're gonna die because we have no, no way to get in touch with anybody. We don't know really where we are in the city and we're here by ourselves and there's nothing. And all I could think of is, 
All I have to do is run faster than Natalie. Because mm. <laughs> I'll get her first. Because <laughs> that's what... Thanks. That's, that's, I'm, a, I'm a real friend. True friend here. Uh, but so we, we kind of walk and then he takes us to another um, murder site. And... Yeah, okay. And, <laughs> this, honestly, it's one of those things that I really think that we encountered one of the murder victims. So we're, I cannot remember what the name was, but when the, the storyteller pulled up the story itself, what we were standing in was a modern courtyard. So you had modern buildings all surrounding us in this green courtyard area. Now, uh, back in 1888, it was um, the slums. Uh, it was just dirty and poor and everything. So what we were standing in, it looked all nice and fresh and new. So as he's telling the story about um, one of the ladies that was murdered, we're standing there. Nobody else is in the courtyard. About 100 meters away, there's two kids, teenagers, playing music on some kind of speaker system. But you can barely hear it. At one point, there was a group of Jack the Ripper tourists that kind of walked along the edge or whatever. But honestly, in the midst of buildings, the four of us and the tour guide, we're, we're it. That's it. As he's talking about this lady getting hacked up and her intestines getting pulled out and everything, we're standing there watching him tell the story. And all of a sudden, a hand rolled. And you could tell it's a hand rolled cigarette, not a store-bought cigarette all of a sudden just kind of falls from the sky and lands near his foot. And I literally, I'm, I, I, I lose track of his story. And I start looking at the buildings all around us and they're office buildings. They're not windows that, there's not one window that's open. So I'm literally looking around like, where in the world did that come from? I'm looking at Connie, I'm looking, nobody notices. Like the guy's still talking, the other two people in the group are just watching and I was like, this, the cigarette is, is literally laying by his foot, smoldering. I'm watching it going, it's going to catch fire. And he's still telling his story. I'm paying attention that the cigarette is still burning while he's talking about this lady being mutilated. There is nowhere that that cigarette could have come from. No balcony, no open window, anything. And so Connie sees me looking around like, I'm just sitting there like constantly looking around like what is going on and there was no explanation for this smoldering cigarette that nobody noticed but you noticed yeah yeah I saw it yeah I did kind of the same thing where it was just the four of us standing there listening and you're just kind of you're listening to a story and you're getting real intense and I thought well what is that as it Again, the cigarette butt literally flies over, like arches over his head and lands on the ground. And it's one of those where I thought, okay, who's flicking cigarettes at us? Not cool. Because we've got our backs to, you know, the buildings. And then I was going to get a little mad because I'm already thinking he's trying to kill me. And now they're going to start flicking cigarette butts at me and not <laughs> be happy. But... Like Natalie said, I couldn't figure out where it came from. And so finally, we both kind of look at each other and I'm like, did you see that? And she's like, you saw it too? And I was like, yeah, I saw it. Where did it come from? We still have no idea. No clue. Where, I mean, literally no windows. And the arc of the cigarette, it just, it couldn't have come from like the ceiling, like if there was like a ceiling bar because it wouldn't have arced over the man's head and landed on the ground that close to him. Um, and it's one of those where your instant, like the hair on the back of your neck, hair on your arms, it's, yeah, it was quite, I still get like all like, Bleh, when I talk about it because um, it's just not an experience that you can describe. And it was just, freaky so as the tour guide then moves us to the next site nobody reacts to a cigarette a cigarette butt on the ground and then, even then though i don't even think that we saw it when we left it was kind of like 
you know, because, I like normally I was like, oh, I'm out of here. Right. Cause normally, you know, you want to pick it up and throw it away, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't even there anymore. I don't think. I don't remember. Cause it was like, yeah, it, it was, was so, so weird. Odd. It was so yeah. weird. And, was just, and one of the things that, um, about the tour itself was, oh, I'm sorry. No, <laughs> I'm like uh, talking, signing doesn't work. When you think of London, there are so many people, there are so many, it's like busy, 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 busy. When we started on the tour, thousands of people around us. And then all of a sudden it's dark and we are walking down one of the streets in Whitechapel. There is not one car. There's not one light on in any building. The buildings are old and decrepit and you see where just poverty was even a long time ago as because the the story teller said when groups come in like back in jack the ripper's time it was the irish immigrants then they moved out and it was the jewish immigrants then they moved out and now it's you know like um uh is it like pakistan or uh muslim uh groups and stuff that have now moved in so you have all these groups that, that are um, just transient. They don't stay in one place for a long time. And But when we're walking, there wasn't one car. There wasn't one street light. There wasn't one light on in any apartment building. It was completely dark. And it was all of a sudden, we went from complete crowds and people and going and moving to complete silence, complete darkness. It was freaky. So that was my get-go the cigarette and the dark places that i was like I, I need to get out of here i need i need to i need to go but it was still fun at the same time i really i would highly recommend it for sure for the storytelling aspect of it and just to kind of get involved with history of an unsolved murder they haven't they don't know who it is they speculate of who it could be you have the movies the books the websites everybody thinks they knows who, they know who it is nobody knows and that's where they, they left it. Even the guy that that was telling the story, his grandmother was nine years old, I think it was, that lived in Whitechapel when the murders happened. So it was that so he's kind of related to it in a way too. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. No, I agree. Definitely recommend it. Um we, we'll have to I'll have to find out. We'll have to Google his name so that way you know which tour uh, to go on because he was, he was quite fascinating, very, very interesting. And he does multiple tours. Um, I think, uh, I would like to do another one, uh, with him. Do carry, uh, small bills, money, cash so that you can pay. Um, because they do kind of stand there like, um, you know, I know I said it was free, but you are supposed to tip. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, loved it. It's a great, it was a great experience. And I hope that you experience something similar um, as well and uh, share your stories with us. We would love to hear if there's any place that you've gone that you've had something similar. Uh, let us know, especially as we travel. We would love to visit. Uh, let me. <laughs> She would love to visit. I just go along. I'm the big chicken. <laughs> I, I have a love hate. I like to be scared and I don't like to be scared. Uh, but I still will check it out. Um, so otherwise, have a great, great day. Subscribe, email, thistleandcoos.com. Let us know what you want from us because we are here for you.